In this video, we will discuss the pathological features of bile duct obstruction and ascending cholangitis, and we will also discuss the pathological features in neonatal cholestasis. Now we will discuss the pathological features of bile duct obstruction and ascending cholangitis together. Why so? Because ascending cholangitis is a complication of bile duct obstruction. So firstly, we will understand the pathological features of acute bile duct obstruction with or without cholangitis. And then we will study the pathological features in chronic bile duct obstruction. So let's start with acute bile duct obstruction. So for acute bile duct obstruction, the keywords are obstruction of the duct causes proximal distension and edema. So if this is the bile duct, then the obstruction of bile duct here will cause this proximal distension of the biliary system. And this proximal distension here will cause distension of these small bile ductules here and there will be edema in this area also. Secondly, this is followed by ductular reactions. So due to the increased pressure of the bile accumulated here, the bile ductules get damaged and to compensate this, the stem cells present in this hepatocytic lobule start to form duct-like structures that are known as ductular reactions. Now the third keyword phrase is that there may be a superimposed infection in the bile duct which is called ascending cholangitis. So the story is that if there is obstruction in the bile duct here, then there will be distension of bile in the proximal parts as you know. Now you already know that whenever there is stasis of some fluids in the body, then these fluids become vulnerable to get infected. Now what happens is that the bacteria that are present here in the intestine starts to ascend from here and here as the bile has been static, so these bacteria start to develop colonies here. This results in infection which is called as ascending cholangitis. So you may see a superimposed infection in the bile duct. So let me again summarize the keywords. The obstruction of the duct causes proximal distension and edema. This is followed by ductular reactions and there may be a superimposed infection or ascending cholangitis. Now let's translate these keywords into the morphology. The first keyword phrase was obstruction of the duct causes proximal distension and edema. So you will see distending ducts and ductules and you will see periportal edema and neutrophils. So due to the obstruction of this duct, there will be distension of the duct upstream and there will be distension of these ductules present at the corners of these hepatocytic lobules. And there will also be periportal edema and neutrophils. So you can see that at the corner of this lobule, the bile ductule has become swollen and around this bile ductule there is edema and neutrophils. The second keyword phrase is that this is followed by ductular reactions. So you will see duct-like structures called ductular reactions at portal to parenchymal interface. So here at the portal parenchymal interface, you will see duct-like proliferating structures that are known as ductular reactions. The third keyword phrase is that there may be a superimposed infection in the bile duct here that is known as ascending cholangitis. And this will be visible as influx of periductular neutrophils in the bile duct epithelium and lumen. So what happens in ascending cholangitis is that these neutrophils at the corner of these hepatocytic lobules, which are even present in those cases where cholangitis does not develop, these neutrophils start to influx in the bile duct epithelium and lumen. So remember that to label ascending cholangitis, you have to see neutrophils that are present in the epithelium and lumen of these larger bile ducts. If the neutrophils are present just here in the corner of hepatocytic lobules, then this is not a feature of ascending cholangitis. This is a feature of acute bile duct obstruction simply. But in order to label as ascending cholangitis, the neutrophils should be present in the bile duct epithelium and lumen also. So let me summarize the pathological features of acute bile duct obstruction with or without cholangitis. You will see distended ducts and ductules and you will see periportal edema and neutrophils like this. You will see ductular reactions and portal to parenchymal interface. And in cases of acute cholangitis or ascending cholangitis, you will see that these neutrophils that are present at these hepatic lobules they influx into the bile duct epithelium and lumen. So these are the pathological features of acute bile duct obstruction with or without cholangitis. Now let's come to the pathological features of chronic bile duct obstruction. For this the keywords are chronic damage and inflammation causes fibrosis and cholestasis. So the story is that if there is chronic inflammation here in the bile duct then it will result in the development of fibrotic tissue. And this fibrotic tissue will compress this bile duct and will not allow the secretion of bile to be properly maintained. So this results in cholestasis. So the keywords are chronic damage and inflammation of the bile duct causes fibrosis and cholestasis. Now the first keyword is fibrosis. Now this fibrosis appears as two ways. 
Firstly, the fibrosis appears as fibrotic tissue in the bile duct and it can also result in fibrosis in the liver which is known as cirrhosis. So let me explain this. So if there is chronic inflammation in this bile duct then obviously due to the chronic inflammation there will be development of fibrotic tissue. But if this is chronic then the impaired secretion of bile will cause accumulation of bile here in the liver. Now you know that whenever the bile gets accumulated in the liver then the, due to the toxic effect of bile the hepatocytes also get damaged. So due to the chronic damage of hepatocytes, fibrotic tissue also starts to develop in the liver which is called as cirrhosis. So this fibrosis can appear in the bile ducts as well as in liver which means fibrotic tissue in the bile duct or fibrotic tissue in the liver which is called cirrhosis. Secondly due to the cholestasis caused by these obstructed bile ducts, you will see the pathological features of cholestasis which I have discussed in a previous video. Now the most striking feature of cholestasis as I have already discussed is feathery degeneration in which the hepatocytes become swollen with the bile pigment and their cytoplasm appear foamy. This is called feathery degeneration. And along with the feathery degeneration, in cholestasis that is caused by chronic bile duct obstruction, you also see malady dank bodies. You know that we studied malady dank bodies in the topic of fatty liver disease. But here in the chronic bile duct obstruction also, you will see these malady dank bodies. So overall in chronic bile duct obstruction, you see fibrotic tissue, you see cirrhosis, and you also see feathery degeneration of hepatocytes that are a classical feature of cholestasis and malary dank bodies can also be visible. Now at last we will discuss the pathological features of neonatal cholestasis. For neonatal cholestasis the most striking morphological feature is joint cell transformation of hepatocytes. Other two features are not important. This is the feature that will be asked in the MCQs. So remember that in neonatal cholestasis the hepatocytes transform into a joint cell structure that is known as joint cell transformation of hepatocytes. Along with this as this is a cholestasis so you will see cholestatic changes which I have discussed in a previous video and at last due to the damage caused by this accumulation of bile there will be regeneration of stem cells known as ductular reactions and also there may be fibrosis in the liver. So remember that in neonatal cholestasis you see joint cell transformation of hepatocytes you see cholestatic changes that is characterized by feathery degeneration and you see ductular reactions and you also see fibrosis. So this concludes the pathological features of acute bile duct obstruction, chronic bile duct obstruction, ascending cholangitis and neonatal cholestasis.